Hello everyone, I'm Wei Qiang, and in this talk, I'm going to present a faster enumeration based lattice reduction, which can be used to reach a root time factor k to the 1 over 2k in time k to the k over a plus a small order of k. This is a dry work with Martin Albert, Shi Bai, Pierre Lan Fouke, Paul Kersnet, and Damien Staley. In more details, we give a new enumeration based lattice reduction, and compared to the prior ones of the same type, we can reach the same quality while with a smaller time complexity than before. And when the input lattice has a large enough dimension, we can prove this improvement under a heuristic assumption. And when the dimension is small, we can still sort in our simulation that this improvement still works for a varying algorithm. I will keep more details about this later. And to continue, I will need to first introduce some necessary background about the lattice. So a lattice is a set of regularly distributed points, as you can see the blue points here, which can be generated with a set of linearly independent vectors like b1 and b2 here. And this is also known as a basis of the lattice. And the same lattice can have arbitrarily many different spaces, like C1, C2 here, form another basis for the same lattice. And there are also two important invariants in lattices, like the first minimum, which is used to denote the norm of the sorted non zero vector in the lattice, and also the volume of the lattice, which can be computed as the determinant of any one basis of the lattice. One of the most interesting and important problems defined in lattices is known as the sorted vector problem. So we are given a basis of the lattice, and you are asked to find a sort vector with norm equal to the first minimum of the lattice. And in this work, we consider a variant of this problem, which is called approximate Hermi SVP. So again, you are given a basis, but now you are asked to find a sort vector with norm upper bounded by the normalized volume of the lattice up to some factor gamma. And by Minkowski upper bound, we know that the first minimum can be upper bounded by the normalized volume of the lattice up to a factor square root n. So whenever you have size n SVP solver, correspondingly, you have the same size approximate Hermi SVP solver with approximation factor square root n. And to solve this problem, the best known solution is to reduce the given basis to obtain a good one. And to quantify the quality of a basis, one can use the so-called Hermi factor, which can be computed as the normal of the sorted basis vector, normally the first one, divided by the normalized volume of the lattice. And once you can reduce the basis, reaching a smaller Hermit factor, then you can use it to solve the approximate Hermit SVP problem with a smaller approximation factor. In practice, the best known algorithm for reducing the basis is known as the BKZ lattice reduction. And to quantify how good a lattice reduction algorithm is, one can use the so-called root Hermit factor. It is a normalized version of the Hermit factor, normalized by the dimension of the lattice, and this also introduces a quantity which is independent from the dimension of the lattice. And if you are further interested in the concrete effect of a lattice reduction, you can further look into the grand smith orthogonalization of the basis. So intuitively, lattice reduction helps to reduce the basis, such that for the resulting basis, it has the grand smith vectors, like b1 star and b2 star here, with norms are closer to each other than before, so then the norms of C1 star and C2 star. And next, I would like to first recall the BKZ lattice reduction algorithm, and then see how it differs from our new algorithm. And to continue, I will need to introduce another notation called orthogonal projection. So here, for example, I will use B322 to denote B3 after removing the projection over the space span by the first two basis vectors. So now here comes the BKZ algorithm. The input include a basis B, denoted from B1 to Bn, and also a cost parameter K, denoting how strong the lattice reduction is going to be. And the BKZ algorithm starts by running an SVP over the first block from B1 to Bk, and then use the final solid vector in the first block to update the first basis vector, and then move to the second block. And again, use the final solid vector in the second block to update the second basis vector and then move to the next block, and so on and so forth. By saying the second block, I mean the second block after removing the projection over the first basis vector. So the BKZ algorithm run SVP from first block to the last block, and also repeat this process sufficiently many times until for each block, the first vector reaches the first minimum of the corresponding block. And to evaluate the cost of the BKZ algorithm, one can instead look at the cost of the underlying SVP solver, which is the most costly step inside BKZ. And the two most practical SVP solver families are implemented by SIF and enumeration, respectively. 
and the ones implemented by SIF take an exponentially large spacer, while for iteration it's just a small polynomial spacer. But for iteration, the running time is uh, super exponential, when, while for SIF it's just an uh, exponential. Even though the dominating constant, as you can see here, for iteration is more than the one for SIF, but the log k factor will anyway eliminate this advantage uh, once case is large enough. And in this world, we focus on the iteration based SVP solver, so we are in the region of using a small polynomial spacer, but super exponentially larger running time. And in our simulation, we always refer to the extreme pooling by Gamma and Guyan and Rigate 2010 for an efficient implementation of the iteration. And for comparison between our results and the prior ones, including like BKZ or SDBKZ, so SDBKZ is a variant of BKZ you can really roughly like to run the BKZ not only over the given basis, but also over the dual basis of the given basis. So for BKZ or SDBKZ, uh, relying on the iteration based uh, SVP solver to reach a quality like a local vector equal to k to the 1 or 2k, the time complexity is dominated by the underlying SVP solver, which is given as k to the k over 2e plus a small order of k, as mentioned before. And in this work, for reaching the same quality, so the same local vector, we achieve a smaller time complexity, which is k to the k over 8 plus a small order of k. Before I go into more details of our new solution, I would like to first review both the quality and time complexity in more details about the prior ones, and then step by step to see how our new algorithm differs from the prior ones. First, let's review the quality of the prior ones. So here, suppose this is the grand SMIC log norms of the reduced basis after running SDBKZ with the size case SVP solver. In this case, uh, this quantity that I denoting the proportion uh, between two uh, successive grand SMIC norms is well studied by the paper of Misensio and Water in 2016, which tells that this quantity that I is fixed for different index i outside this last block. So it introduces a straight line here outside the last block and in this case, I will also call this delta i as the slope of this slide. And in this world, we consider a slightly different variant of this result. So we will replace the underlying SVP solver with the same size, but approximate Hermit SVP solver. Again, if you run SDBKZ with the approximate Hermit SVP solver, and again with size k, then you will again obtain a straight line here outside the last block. And we also know the slope of this, uh, of this line in this case is equal to the square of the root Hermit factor achieved by the given approximate Hermit SVP solver. But this is not the case for BKZ. So for BKZ, this quantity delta i is not fixed for difference index i. So it does not give a line. And we refer the audience to the, to the appendix of our paper in April for more details for the case of BKZ. And also because of this good property achieved by SDBKZ, we choose it as a subroutine in our new algorithm for reaching our new result. But it does not mean that it is impossible to use BKZ for reaching the same result as what we can use uh, as what we can reach uh, using SDBKZ here, and we leave it as a future work. And next, let's move to the cost. So let's focus on the last block. To ensure the first place of the last block reach to the first minimum of this block, one need to run an iteration over this full block. And this is known to be realized by the Kanan's algorithm. So one need to first reduce this block so that except for the first place, each place from second place to the end reach the first minimum of the corresponding block from this place to the end. And the last step is a full iteration over this full block. And the time complexity is well analyzed by a host delay in 2007 is given as k to the k over 2e plus a small order of k. And this is also known as the worst case inversion cost over a size case lattice. But this worst case cost is not the case for each block. For example, for the first block over a straight line, the inversion cost is only k to the k over 8 plus a small order of k. And this difference also introduced a conjecture for a long time that it seems possible to achieve the same quality like the one achieved by SDBKZ but with a reduced overall time complexity like k to the k over 8 instead of the k to the k over 2e. And in this way, we give a positive answer to this conjecture. And before I continue, I'd like to make one more remark over this last block. So in the following, 
I will always assume for this last block, each place reached the first minimum of the corresponding block from this place to the end. And this corresponds to the so-called HKZ reduced basis. So that's why also why I will also call the corresponding block here, uh, the curve here as the HKG curve. And there are two remarks. First, this is not uh, promised by the SDBK reduction. And second, this additional assumption also does not introduce a larger overall time complexity. So now let's move to uh, our solution. So how can we do better? So we know that the, the main obstacle is from the innovation cost over this last block of size k, which take uh, k to the k over 2e. So instead of run SDBKZ with a size k SVP solver, now we train uh, to run the SDBKZ with a reduced size SVP solver, so that the innovation cost over this reduced size is well controlled within this expected cost. But this also introduces a straight line outside the last block with a larger slope such that for the first basis vector node, it has a larger norm than before. So it achieves a worse Hermy factor and a root Hermy factor. So we have to continue to reduce this basis uh, such that for the resisting uh, first basis vector, we achieve the same norm as before. So achieve the same uh, Hermy factor and root Hermy factor. So this is our target. In more details, as we promised, now we train to run SDBKZ with a reduced size SVP solver. And here I'm going to denote the reduced size by k0. So equal to k times 2e over 8, approximately equal to 0 0.67 times k, such that the worst case iteration cost over this reduced size can be well controlled within this expected cost. And as you can see here, and also you will see in the following, uh, different block size like k0 will get involved in our new algorithm. Uh, and k here we only serve as a cost parameter instead of a block size. And again, by mean cost gap amount, we know that k0 dimensional SVP solver implies the same size uh, approximate Hermy SVP solver with approximation factor square root k0. And this implies actually for a k0 dimensional lattice, uh, we can already reach a Hermy factor square root k0, and also the corresponding uh, root Hermy factor here. And together with the relation between k0 and k, we can derive our starting uh, root Hermy factor, so k to the one over 1 1.36 times k. And this is for sure much larger than our targeting uh, root Hermy factor. So now we already have a starting uh, approximate Hermy SVP solver with uh, reaching this uh, starting root Hermy factor in time k to the k over 8. And next we aim to construct uh, from this starting one, uh, construct a new one, uh, uh, approximate Hermy SVP solver with a new approximation factor over a new dimension, still in time k to the k over 8 while reaching a smaller root Hermy factor. If we can achieve this, uh, then we can repeat such process uh, sufficiently many times until we reach this target root Hermy factor. So this is the general idea of our new algorithm. And in the following slide, I'm going to detail the first step. So here, for example, I'm going to take k equal 1000. So we can start with the SVP over a reduced size around 670. And we can check the worst case inflation cost over this reduced size is well within this is uh, expected cost. And also make a note on the starting uh, root Hermy factor. Now here comes the first step. We are going to fit the SDBKZ oracle with our starting approximate Hermy SVP solver. And this helps to reduce a basis uh, of larger dimension. And for the corresponding grand smith log norms, it has one straight line outside the last block with slope equal to the square of the root Hermy factor achieved by the given approximate Hermit SVP solver. And knowing the slope and also the restriction of the enumeration over this region, we can know the largest size that we can enumerate over this straight line, so over this green region. And together with the starting dimension k0, we can know the next dimension k1. And again, by Minkowski upper bound, we can know the upper bound of the norm of the solution returned by the enumeration over this uh, straight line. And together with the volume of the whole lattice, we can compute the new Hermit factor and the new root Hermit factor. And as you can see here, it's getting smaller. And again, with this new approximate Hermit SVP solver, reaching a smaller root Hermit factor, we can fit it to the SDBKZ oracle, and this can help to reduce a basis of even larger dimension. And for the corresponding grand smith log norms, you can see a new segment of light with an even smaller slope. And this even smaller slope can help to uh, introduce an even smaller root Hermit factor. 
And once you can repeat this process sufficiently many times, then we can eventually approach our targeting a leukemia factor. So this is our general idea in more details. And next, I would like to first recall, uh, sorry, I would like to first give an intuition uh, about the overall cost of our new algorithm. So here, first, we know the elimination cost at each iteration is well bounded by k to the k over 8, as we decide. And once we only need to run a logarithmic number of iteration for approaching our target leukemia factor, then the overall time complexity will be k to the k over 8 plus a small, order, a small order of k. And actually, we can prove this is indeed the case. And next, if we look closer into the this grand semi log norms of the reduced basis by our new algorithm, we can see there are different segments of light uh, with the different slope here. And this is different from the one generated by SDBKZ, which only get one, uh, one straight light with one global slope. And together with the picture below, so as the algorithm proceeds, you can see the slope is getting smaller and smaller. Actually, this matches our intuition about the reduction, lattice reduction, which helps to reduce the basis uh, such that the grand spin norms are getting closer and closer to each other. That's why the proportion uh, between two successive grand semi norms is getting smaller and smaller. And as the accurate procedure, we will eventually reach uh, one segment of light with slope approaching the one uh, generated by SDBKZ. And this slope also helps to, to reach the Luchemi factor, the expected Luchemi factor. And last, I, I would like to make one more remark about the Luchemi factor after 10 times of iteration. So 10 here equal to the logarithm of the cos beta k, k equal 1000. So after logarith logarithmic number of iteration, uh, the Lukami factor already converged very well. So this matches our intuition that we only need a logarithmic number of iteration for approaching our targeting uh, Lukami factor. And next, I would like to get the full description of our new algorithm, which we call fast enum algorithm, aim to control an approximate Hermit SVP solver with approximation factor gamma i. I is the number of iteration level. Other input include cost parameter k and also basis b. So once if you are in the first iteration, uh, you just run the worst case iteration uh, over this reduced size with cost uh, within this expected cost. And if you are not in the first iteration, then p process with the SDBKZ with the approximate Hermit SUP solver from last iteration, and then run an iteration over this the region correspond to the first segment of line. And for the analysis, uh, we need a heuristic assumption, which need to assume that each gamma approximate Hermit SVP solver return an answer with normal exactly equal to the normalized volume of the corresponding block up to a factor gamma and not smaller. And formally, indeed, we can prove that the omega-1 iteration will be sufficient for approaching the expected Lukami factor up to a factor 1 plus a small order 1 in the exponent in time k to the k of a plus a small order of k times some polynomial or the beside of input basis b. And if you still remember, for each iteration, we need to work over a lattice of the dimension roughly size k larger than before. So with omega 1 iteration, that's why we need the overall dimension to be roughly like omega 1 factor larger than k. But this is not satisfiable for analysis for crypto system like this candidate, where we require the dimension n to be relatively close to k, like n over k is constant. So instead to uh, run an emulation over this 100% lighter, we propose a new practical variant uh, where the emulation journal also covers the HKG journal. So for the practical variant, uh, now we emulate also uh, over the combination uh, of straight lighter and part of the HKG curve. So now the question becomes how can we distribute the proportion for the straight line and the proportion for the HKG curve? To answer this, uh, this question, we try to emulate the cost uh, for different di uh, distribution. So for example, when c equals zero, it means to emulate over the HKG curve, so this is the worst case cost. So when c equals one, it corresponds to emulate over this 100% line. And as you can see here, when c equals 0 0.25, we reach the lowest cost. That's why we choose this value for our practical variant. And the second issue is about the tearing block. So for each middle block, you can always pay process to have this straight line plus HKG curve, and then you can emulate over this, uh, uh, this presumed straper. So 25% of straight line and the rest uh, HKG curve to reach the lowest cost. But for the tearing block, you can no more emulate over this uh, presumed straper. So the emulation cost can be much larger than the expected cost in this case. 
So we have to reduce the size of this block. And this will certainly introduce uh, worse quality for this uh, local block. But in the simulation later, as we will see, this modification uh, will not affect the global quality a lot. And these two modifications together introduce our practical variant uh, in the simulation. And we can see the simulated cost of the practical variant uh, fit 1 over A curve very well. And also, you can see that's a death light uh, even below this 1 over A curve. And this death light be, uh, corresponds to the last step iteration cost without considering any preprocessing cost. And we will give more di uh, discussion about this later. And in the picture below, you can see the quality. So the root hermit factor achieved by the practical uh, variant uh, is at least as good as the one achieved by the BKZ, standard BKZ. To conclude, for reaching the same root hermit factor, we achieve a smaller time complexity, k to the KOA plus a small order of k, instead of the O1. And considering the quantum acceleration, we can get a further factor of two improvement. And this improvement is supported by different evidence for different regions or parameters. So when the dimension is large enough, like n over k is omega 1, we can prove this improvement under heuristic assumption. But when the dimension is small, like n over k is constant 2, this improvement is supported by our simulation analysis of the practical variant. For future works, so first it will be interesting to remove the heuristic assumption that used in our analysis. We know that it is possible to follow the works of on host delay 2007 plus either on host delay 11 or new 17. So in their work, they managed to remove the heuristic assumption in the analysis of time complexity for BKZ. And second, it will be interesting to see an extension of our works to other lattice reduction algorithms, like to BKZ or slide reduction. For BKZ, as we already mentioned, it does not introduce a straight line outside the last block, so it will introduce additional complication for the analysis, and it will be more interesting for slide reduction. So the expectation is that reaching the same improvement for the time complexity, so from k to the k over 2e to be k to the k over 8, by, reaching, by maintaining the same quality as the one uh, achieved by a slide reduction. And further, without preprocessing cost, the last step iteration cost can be even below uh, k to the k over 8. So it seems possible to do some trade off between the preprocessing cost and the last step iteration cost so that the overall cost can be uh, below k to the k over 8 while maintaining the same quality as uh, we can achieve uh, for now. Or, in other words, uh, using the same cost here while approaching uh, even better quality. And last is about the cryptography uh, relevance of this work. So in this way, we already have some trials uh, for this small NWK region, which correspond to the crypto analysis uh, for crypto system like uh, next candidate. But in our works, uh, we only have uh, simulation results without uh, a formal analysis. Uh. So it would be very interesting to see a formal analysis uh, to confirm that uh, we indeed have this improvement from K to the K over 2E to k to k over 8 for this small n k region. And after that, it will be interesting to continue to see the, the concrete, the new concrete crossover point between our new algorithm and the state-based lattice reduction, like the Jessica based lattice reduction for concrete uh, cryptography parameter in both uh, classical and content setting. And this complete my talk, and thank you for your attention.